humble set of things. Uh, primarily, I'm the founder of an organization called the Blue Ribbon Movement. The Blue Ribbon Movement works at creating and nurturing leaders, especially amongst the youth. Uh, apart from this social enterprise, I also do some HR consulting, do corporate theater-based training, and I'm doing my PhD from IIT Bombay with a theme of leadership. Yeah, so right after my commerce, I went into I am Bangalore. I interned at an investment bank, uh, so I saw hardcore credit derivative trading and stuff, and decided that's not for me. I opted out of placements, had a startup, startup crashed. Did a few corporate stints in the interim, so I worked with BCG and with Hay Group uh, for uh, some time, and then I got back to what I'm doing, which is uh, pretty much blue ribbon movement. Um, so yeah, it's been uh, that trajectory. Uh, I guess uh, the social space is a very very challenging space in itself because you are uh, facing problems which you don't even know whether they will get solved in your lifetime. Uh, you are dealing with no profit motives, so you are completely driving people with a lot of their soul force. Uh, there is so much of uh, ambiguity in terms of what are solutions. It's so tough to make social enterprises super profitable, uh, not that we are intending but uh, the economics of that is also fairly difficult. Um, so a whole set of uh, entrepreneurial challenges uh, but at a personal level also challenges in terms of the fact that when people ask what do you do, uh, they, they expect a single answer, they want you to fit into a single box, they want you to be doing only one thing. So when you are doing multiple things, it does, doesn't kind of add up uh, in their heads. Uh, so yeah, but what also keeps uh, me going is the fact that because I am doing something so socially relevant or something I so strongly believe in, uh, all these difficulties which are huge also are sort of surmountable simply because the passion uh, keeps me going. At the end of the day, I know that whatever I do, ultimately it adds to making the world a better place. Yeah, support of family and uh, also acceptance of the family, I guess, I mean, my dad, for example, would uh, had very strongly suggested that I take up some corporate experience, so when my venture crashed and then I went back to the corporate, he was uh, also, he his point stood validated in the way that, oh, get some corporate experience, so I guess uh, most important for the family is that they may disagree with me, but they have accepted my choices throughout, I think that's, that's where... Uh, it's it's hard to expect families to go outright and support when you're do, doing something very radical. Uh, but as long as they accept and as long as you are uh, fine living with the disagreements you have with your family, I think uh, that that's what uh, works. And I think if you're chasing something that you really love to do, then no price is too high, including uh, a little bit of discordialness with your family. I was fortunate; I never had that. I had parents who supported uh, supported me. Uh, but I think uh, yeah, it, it's worth stretching your limits. Okay, uh, so in NM, nothing that I studied in the class helped uh, in the sense that uh, I feel BCom is a course that can be taught over one or two years but it stretched over five years. Uh, but everything I did in extra curriculums, right from my college festival Umang to computer society to participating in competitions, all of that really helped, all of that gave me the confidence, gave me the exposure. Um, in IIM Bangalore, uh, I guess the biggest, uh, while what I am doing doesn't directly, it's not a management uh, activity. I think it acts as a lovely safety net, number one. Uh, so when my venture crashed, I had the, uh, the sort of the opportunity to take a few years off, get my savings back and work in the corporate. Even now I am able to take risks because I know there is a degree that I have. Uh, it also gave me phenomenal contacts, phenomenal networks, phenomenal exposure also. I guess my exchange program took me to backpacking around Europe which opened my mind up a lot. I am Bangalore also continues to support my work. So the first South Asian Youth Conference happened at I am Bangalore where eight countries from South Asia came together. Professors at I am Bangalore were also mentors. They are still in touch and they still advise on a lot of things that uh, we do. So I think net net uh, the gain for me so much hasn't so much been in terms of the content of what I learned, uh, but has been on the peripheries both in NM and in I am Bangalore. Yeah, so first I think the whole idea of being socially interested, I think going ahead every single person, every MBA will have to be socially interested because your workers are going to unionize, they are going to ask for better time, better pay, customers are going to question the choices of your company, there is going to be greater shareholder activism, governments are going to be more vigilant, the society is fundamentally becoming more and more uh, an important stakeholder with the business. So everybody needs to be and will be socially interested but for those of you who are looking at making a career in social in the social space i would say uh, take a leap as soon as possible for two reasons one is there's a lot of need for management talent there's a lot of need for 
uh, sort of people who are educated with management to get into this space. And second, there's also a lot of opportunity when you look at the world out there and you see immense number of problems. I mean, on a day-to-day -day basis, you have your traffic jams and you have a bad school system or you have so many social problems which are waiting to be solved. Uh, and we as management students have the ability to solve them. So I would say if you are socially inclined, this is the right time to go in. Uh, our government is also supporting social enterprises and creating livelihoods. There's, it's, it's never been a better time than now for getting into the social entrepreneurship space. Uh, if you do intend to get in though, I would uh, suggest one, find mentors. I think that makes a big difference and mentors not only as business mentors, but people who done actual social, grassroots level social work because they understand what kind of solutions work the best. So I would say get mentors quickly, get models around the world and see how they apply into India. Uh, and third, I guess do not expect uh, a large scale venture fund to happen or reaching 1000 crore turnovers. I don't think social entrepreneurship in India or maybe even around the world has reached a level where you can uh, make your big killing on an IPO in a social enterprise. So I guess in terms of your needs and life plans, you need to align it accordingly. In 1992 uh, was the first time that the governments of the world realized that something was wrong with the environment and some action needed to be taken. So all of them came together to Rio for the first Earth Summit. From then on, there have been multiple conventions, multiple summits, meetings and what happened in Rio was Rio plus 20. So this was 20 years after the Earth Summit. Uh, it was the gathering of all the heads of the states, revisiting this whole question of environment, sustainability and essentially hopefully coming down to conclusions about what do we do next, how do we accelerate pace in terms of saving the planet. Uh, so that was Rio plus 20. Uh, alongside in Rio there were a whole set of other things happening as well. There was a people's summit, so a huge chunk of the civil society feels very disconnected with the UN effort. They think it's very slow, very bureaucratic. So they formed a separate summit called the people's summit which was happening in Rio. And there were a whole set of other uh, tiny events uh, parallelly happening. So it was a collection of everybody from the social chain space. Yeah, so what happens at such summits, uh, the UN summits is typically declarations are adopted, resolutions are uh, adopted. The text of the declaration that is going to be adapted is called the zero draft. There are countries which make changes. These are essentially promises that all the countries in the world together have made. So the process is that of 100% consensus. So all the countries have to agree on what they finally sign on. Uh, the entire summit is on that document on kind of agreeing on a zero draft which lists down what countries will do, what's important to them and what will they focus on. How we were there was at Blue Ribbon because we've been working with youth and we've been working beyond India also. We applied for a recognition from the UN. We were accredited by the United Nations uh, as a valid NGO. Uh, the UN has a very active process of engaging the civil society. It engages with the civil society in terms of major groups. Uh, we were a part of the major group for children and youth. So that's how we were accredited and uh, we were allowed to participate in all kinds of negotiations, the actual discussions. Uh, participation in the main assembly where the heads of states sit is restricted but there are passes which are exchanged and shared and uh, so you get a chance to sit with the heads of states also and attend the main summit as well. Go. Okay, the entire summit was filled with lots of interesting uh, events but if I think about highlights, uh, one was obviously seeing our Prime Minister in person, seeing him talk. Uh, I managed to attend the main session when uh, the Prime Minister was slated to speak. So it was really amazing to just see your Prime Minister, I guess. Uh, but I think one big victory for youth in the world was when we were pushing for including non-formal education in the text. So the idea in the text was that uh, they were talking about education to build a sustainable world but they were excluding non-formal education and all youngsters lobbied, pushed for having that word included in the text. Switzerland introduced a certain proposal, all the other countries agreed to support and finally it made it to the final text. So when youngsters are able to make modifications to the final text that countries agree on, that's a huge achievement. So lobbying, you meet diplomats, you meet, so meeting the Indian delegation itself was also really uh, interesting, uh, understood a lot about why India has stances that it kind of has. Um, we also took a lot of direct action on the spot, so which means we had this mock award ceremony called the fossil of the day which we would award to the country which blocked the negotiations. We also had a space where we would uh, 
practice silence so there was a silent meditation space that we created uh, every morning half an hour before you get into the negotiations you sit in silence so doing all these kind of actions also within the un summit required permissions and stuff which we did engage with uh, but yeah we did a whole set of uh, different actions uh, silver tapes on our mouth when countries were opposing high level youth representation so yeah direct actions were memorable also the entire bandwidth of uh, experiences in terms of having the people summit on one end where people are completely sort of talking about a whole new system to the un and within the un also there's a whole range there are the country heads but there were also side events ngos so the the entire breadth was i think something that really uh, really kind of give me a high yeah because i was there uh, one of the events i was attending was the world youth congress uh, and one of the activities we took up was to go to the favelas the bastis the slums in rio uh, we went right into the slums which have immense drug problems there still uh, infested with a lot of crime uh, we went there through a local ngo that has set up a community center there and is trying to create uh, an entirely positive movement using that center so when they interacted with locals who did not know english so through translators what we were doing there were action projects the idea behind action projects is to go to the local communities and understand issues in that city so we were in groups uh, different groups of different things some of us did wall painting and graffiti with them where we painted socially responsible messages others set up a nursery so planted trees to offset the carbon footprint of all of us flying down to rio uh, some of us did photography others did street theater with local so it was us mingling with the community the idea was not so much what we did as much as us actually having a chance to interact and understand the dynamic of the youth there and what they face so yeah that was okay so whatever is agreed on uh, at the summit which most of us are very unhappy with because it's a very uh, light text countries haven't really made commitments but whatever gets agreed on one it's soft law which means uh, you cannot hold a country to it but typically countries do not default in implementation they default in agreement that is they'd rather not agree on something rather than not implement it so now what happens is these texts go to the countries to various ministries and start getting factored into the policy making of the countries similarly un and un bodies also the way they direct their aid their funding also is determined by the kind of text that the countries have agreed on the kind of declaration uh, so what next for us as youth is to literally go back to our government go to various ministries and show them that this is what you have signed on what is it that you ultimately which are the schemes that you are actually implementing to make this happen so i think uh, implementation is about holding your government accountable for what they have signed on going forward blue ribbon uh, has what we are already doing which was non formal education is something that we are going to continue so we are going to focus on sustainability education we have a program called the social leaders program where we provide leadership training and youngsters then take up social projects which are related to sustainability so what we are essentially going to do is continue driving this uh, at the south asian level we run a conference called the south asian youth conference so that's happening in islamabad next year uh, rather this year not next year and uh, our discussions will kind of feed into the next climate meeting which is cop the conference of parties that's happening in qatar in doha so a lot of projects a lot of sub projects and a lot of discussions and uh, policy input